calling all llamas. Today, we're going to be going over some llama facts. Number one, llamas like to adopt a herd of smaller animals and chase off predators that threaten them. This began being utilized in the early 1980s by sheep farmers who have used llamas successfully as guard animals since then. Some would even use them to guard their cousins, the alpaca. Llamas are most commonly used as guard animals in the western United States where predators such as coyotes are more common. Using llamas as guards has reduced losses to predators for many farmers. The value of the livestock saved from predators each year is more than enough to cover the purchase cost and annual maintenance of a guard llama. When is the best time to introduce a llama to a flock of animals that it will be guarding? From two years of age, llamas can bond closely with their flock and are exchangeably very effective in protecting them. Some llamas bond more quickly to sheep or goats if they are introduced just before a lamb is born. Many sheep and goat farmers say a special bond quickly develops between the lambs and their guard llama, and the llama is particularly protective of the lambs. You might think that multiple guards are better than one, but not in this case. Multiple guard llamas are less effective than one. That's because they like to bond with one another instead of with livestock, and they end up ignoring the flock. Can any llama become a shepherd guard animal? In general, any llama can become a shepherd animal, although there are exceptions. Remarkably, they don't need to be trained to do this job, and they're easy to care for. In summary, llamas are a great way to protect animals. Number 2. Aside from helping shepherds, what else are llamas used for? Llamas can carry heavy weight and are used as pack animals, but if you overload a llama with too much weight, it will lay down and refuse to move. Number 3. Which animals are llamas related to? You might not realize that llamas are cousins as camels. When they were first discovered by Europeans, they were thought to be related to sheep, but their similarity to camels was later recognized. They were officially classified under the genus Camelus, which contains camels, and it took 42 years before they were put into the new category of llama a lot later along with alpacas. Number 4. How do llamas communicate? One of the ways llamas communicate is humming. Whenever a llama senses danger, it doesn't just hum, but let out an alarm call. <laughs> Number 5. Llam baby llamas are called crias, and llama twins are rare. Number 6. Have you ever heard of llamas spitting? Llamas actually only spit at people when they're provoked. If a llama flattens its ears, that's a way to know it's angry and will help you avoid being spit at. When a llama has been brought up with bottle feeding or with excessive handling, they tend to treat humans as they treat other llamas, with kicking, neck wrestling, and famously spitting. If a llama has been properly brought up, it will really spit. Number 7. While we're on the topic of spitting, did you know that llamas can spit up to a distance of 10 feet? How far can you spit? Number 8. How to feed your llama. Llamas feed themselves by grazing. They don't need much space in which to graze. In fact, just one acre of land can sustain four llamas. In comparison, cows can take up as much as two acres each. Number 9. Will my llama ruin my lawn? It won't. It will actually replace your lawnmower. Llamas trim grass when they graze, unlike other animals that uproot grass. They also walk gently on the ground instead of making furrows. Number 10. I'm so confused. How do I tell the difference between llamas and alpacas? Here are some easy tricks to help you distinguish between llamas and alpacas. Llama ears are banana shaped, unlike the short ears of alpacas. Llamas are taller, and llamas have a longer face than alpacas. Thanks for watching. Please comment your favorite fact about llamas and anything, another fact that I didn't mention. Please like this video and subscribe. Bye.